brunch. All yep. right, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> <laughs> There's a brunch and we weren't invited to it. Hey, everybody, welcome to this episode of the Rooster Podcast. I want to thank Me Undies for being the presenting sponsor on this episode of the podcast. You know Me Undies, the fun, comfy undies that feel as good as they look. To those of you who haven't tried them, listen up. You can get incredible underwear sent to your door by Me Undies, meaning no more hunting around for the perfect pair at a crowded store and just settling for good enough. Ashley, I know, wears me undies. Bethany, you wear them I too? I do too. I, she told me that before the podcast. Yeah, I did. Like, I <laughs> oh, he said no, I did. He oh, didn't want you to worry oh, right. that he already no, knew no, that no, fact good. about me. I just wanted the, I didn't want any speculation in the comments. <laughs> we talked about it a lot happier the other night. Yeah, we did. Me but. Undies is so sure you'll love your first pair that if you're not happy, they'll do whatever they can to get you into the right pair. And if they can't, keep them and they'll refund you. So it really is risk free to try the best underwear ever. And if you're one of the more devious listeners, it sounds like a pretty good way to take advantage of their kindness. Still not sure? Well, Me Undies has a deal for our viewers. First time purchasers get 15% off their first pair of Me Undies and free shipping. That's 15% off plus free, free shipping and a guarantee that you and Me Undies will be very happy together. To get 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. That's MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. Hi, everybody. I'm Bernie. Hi, Bernie. I'm Bethany. I'm Adam. Hi, Adam. I'm Ashley. We have too many fucking people with the same names. That I know. Work this Six Adams that work I said this country. I'm Do you think we can start just assigning people new names? Ooh. I think you're going to have to because there's no way they're allowed to hire another Bethany. I told them at the beginning they couldn't do that. I, I do have a little bit of a secret here, though. A little bit of a secret. What's the secret? What's the secret? So, I don't know if we've said this. Have we said this in the podcast? We'll, we'll find out. So, <laughs> Patrick, who you may know from us yelling the word Patrick out loud to the booth every episode, uh, I found out that Patrick is not Patrick's name. Really? Ooh. He had a different name, and the day he showed up at Rooster Teeth, he chose to go by Patrick instead of his actual name because there was no other Patricks here, but there weren't any other of his real name either. And now we have another Patrick that works here, Patrick yeah. Matthews, yeah. probably. We and have a Patrick couple others too, I think. Yeah, we have a bunch of Patricks, and so, but there's no other version of his name, but what, I want to say what his name is. Was there... Not that uncommon a name either. What? Is there a... I'm trying to think of is a not like, common name that we don't have. Does he go by have. that name in his personal life now too? Like, is there a reason he is chose there, Patrick? Like, is there a middle name involved? Did you guys know this? Is the crew, did you guys know this? That Patrick has a pseudonym? You're just He's basically a liar, Patrick right? in front of his entire crew? Yeah, I felt like you too. Are you going to tell us offline? Actually, I like the fact that Patrick and I had a secret together. Now I just blew it. <laughs> now I got nothing. I have one person in mind that I think might know that I'm going to text. You think so? Yeah. We should have big mysteries to what Patrick's yeah. real Adam name is. is. Adam Baird is not Adam. His name is Samuel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's Samuel. His, his middle name is Adam. That's He's why. Samuel Adam. You're Michael. Yeah, uh, yeah Michael. Delicious. You're Michael. You know, it's I really mean, fun, like, learning all the different names of people. See, I worry about it, too, a little bit, too, because I want to say, well, there's other people, too, but I don't want to say what their actual legal name is, because yeah. now it's like, we, you know, kind of have to think about security and yep, stuff like that, too. We do. You know, we absolutely which is do. a segue to, to what we want to talk to Bethany about, which, Bethany, we got RTX eee, coming up. Hot seat. What can you talk about for RTX oh, let's coming see. up? Oh, let's see. We talked about a good amount of, you know, the highlights and, and whatnot with the RTX preview uh, stream or preview show last. Uh, I think they have something up there right now. What do I see? Oh, the app is up. Oh, yeah. So the mobile app went out today, which is a really cool thing, actually. Um, yes, we have been getting some tweets about some information being a little bit off. Trust me, we see them. We're updating them. There's always something that as soon as we publish it, it's either not accurate anymore or it you know, changes, you know, that's, oh, Ashley's smiling because or there's someone, someone still really hasn't gotten at, us her information. I'm really bad at turning in panel descriptions. You would have loved this, Bernie. She went, Ashley went to pick up her badge today Shame from Clarissa. You. And Clarissa's like, I'm not giving you your badges until you give me my information. But she still gave Fun me Fun fact, I still, I got my badge. I still haven't turned it in, <laughs> but I'm going to very soon. Yeah, so RTX, guys, August 3rd to 5th, it's coming up. We, I believe you guys were creating the discount code to put up on the screen. We still have that going on. If you watch the RTX preview show, it is get four zero RTX. Um, that's going to be good through the end of the day tomorrow. So that will oh, get wow. you 40% off of your badge. So please make sure you do that. If you've been like holding out or unsure, like make sure you do that today. Yeah, and we still, we still at the point where we sell 
badges the day of? We do. It's just now that security is a little bit different. It, it's not going to be as easy. We can still do it, but um, we don't get very many walk-ups on site. <laughs> yeah. And if you're kind of on the fence about it, too, it's like the, you can look at the app and yeah. see. The app is really good. Is the it the same developer so that we've good. had for years? It's the same developer of the same father of one of my best friends. Mr. Larry Dunkelman. Mr. Dunks. Is the uh, is the developer of the app. Dude, I'm, I'm always impressed by it. It's He's every, so good. And every year it gets better. Like this right. year it has... Uh, places that you can go to eat around yeah, Austin. Yeah, good places to eat. Because we get that question a lot. And so now we have a place where you can, like, go and look for your different types of food, different hangout spots, you know, well, stuff and this outside is a good, of RTX. This is a good time for people to revisit your vlog, too, about uh, where to eat around Austin. It's funny you say that. I just watched that earlier today. Is there, is there Did it make you hungry? To that? Yeah, what would you add to it? Well, it was a, it was a huge debate. So uh, for one of the vlogs, like right in the middle of the, the vlog year, would have been during RTX, we went and ate at seven different restaurants, and then we chose. So we'll just go down the list, and mm -hmm. you guys tell me what you guys would pick. Okay. We started with breakfast tacos in the morning. Okay. Because I don't care what anybody says. Barbecue is is big in Austin, but I think Austin is like synonymous with breakfast, breakfast tacos. tacos. That's our unique yep. thing. It's like we get. I know other places I have bar so. breakfast tacos, by the way, but it's like culture here in Austin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Every, so every, every every set you go to is like you have breakfast tacos. Well, breakfast tacos. Where the, would you go? The two for me are Tyson's Tacos on Airport and Vera Cruz, which the the food truck is off Caesar Chavez, but they do have one up north now. Dude, Vera Cruz. Okay. Oh, oh speaking good. of which, I'm gonna mention mine. Torchies was the one I would have originally Blah. said they wouldn't let us record there though So we ended up oh. going to Paco's tacos, which Paco's is nice is pretty good local business really great go to Paco's tacos Dude, Would you would you still suggest torches? I feel like no. that, that place has fallen off quite a bit I don't think we can really? suggest for, that for, for, their, for their breakfast tacos. They're so listen the, the Breakfast tacos to me have to taste like something. I couldn't make at home. I get that and torches feel that way They make a mistake. You know what the mistake they make is because two of the big ingredients for me in a, in a breakfast taco are bacon and egg and they, when you order something like bacon, egg, and cheese, they cook the bacon in the egg. Like they chop it up and oh. then they scramble oh, it with the egg. you want a whole piece. No, you want the scrambled egg and then a slap of bacon there, you know? I also want to know it's like built as yeah. they go. I don't want to yeah. like them cooking something special for me. It's yeah. just like they mm. have like these ingredients and they just slap together a breakfast yeah. taco. I'm with you though. Tyson's is, is where yeah. I would go. Tyson's is my favorite taco place Tyson's here. delicious. I want, want to point out something though. The, in the RTX app, they have a Torchies listed and it's a... Kind of a nice strip if you're good at RTX and you're going to go to Torchies because we've talked about it so much on the podcast. I do think they're great if you've never had them before because they're super decadent tacos. Yeah. I do think they get they kind of wear thin after a mm -hmm. few years. But they're very popular for a reason. The one that's listed in the RTX app is actually the, the food truck where they started because they started where? in a first street. Where was that? Oh, South First. It's not the, I assume is it's it, not there anymore? It? No, it is there, oh. but it's like I don't. it's an outdoor location. Mm -hmm. It's a food truck. There's actually a Torchies if, if you want to go. There's one by the university that's a little bit... Oh, I know which one on Guadalupe. Yeah, a little bit further away from the convention center, but probably a little more comfortable in the middle of In a of restaurant. Yeah, 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 I, I get that. God, I want to say that there's a trailer somewhere on 6 now that has them. Maybe that's just Gordo's. I could be wrong. But Gordo's. Talk about food wearing thin, man. Gordo's. Gordo's is, Gordo's is a really awesome place to take people who are in from out of town. One, because it's an excuse to indulge, but it's a limited excuse. I would never go there just because, like, what are you in the mood for? Let's go to Gordo's because... That place is everything is so huge and so rich and so donut. Yeah. Everything is served on a donut or with a donut or <laughs> it is, inside it is. a donut Christian, or can I get one outside of those a donut. It's, a full a full one if you can. It's definitely the place that you take someone when they visit. But man, like that place seriously, like if you've ever wanted to feel like death, eat there. Well, it's like this when you have to tell someone to uh, go easy on their dinner donut because there are dessert <laughs> donuts later. <laughs> like, I've you're never eaten at there. a different level, dude. It's, it's really good. Hmm. It's just, it's just so much. Well, what about breakfast tacos for you? Uh, I'm an El Cholito girl. She is, man. Okay. She loves yeah, El Cholito. Yeah, I really like good. El Cholito. Just bre uh, like breakfast, lunch, dinner. Hard to get you from the convention center. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. There's a couple it's, it's different a locations, but yeah. I don't think any of them are convenient to the convention center. So it'd be probably an, an Uber at the least. So after breakfast tacos, we went straight for barbecue. Real quick, barbecue. What's I don't need meat. Go? Style oh, right. switch, dude. Style switch is great. It's so Love good. style switch. Yeah. Style switch is, is out there. Also not convenient to the convention center. Blacks is probably more convenient to the convention center. Pro yeah, probably. Mickelhuates. Ironworks is the closest thing to the convention center. In fact, it's the closest thing, period, it's... to the convention center. But it's like, I don't know. So uh, here's a question. I don't like to review things negatively. Let's well, say let's, that. let's be clear. <laughs> Leave it like, at that. I, ha I have a hard time finding bad barbecue. It's just that the bar for barbecue in Austin is so high. It's all good barbecue. And then it's just 
different tiers of good. Well, what I've makes never... barbecue good for someone who doesn't eat meat? Like, why is one place better than another? I like simplicity. Franklin's is actually close to the convention center. If you want to waste six hours in line, you can do that. We're oh. just talking about, we're going to talk about food places for an hour and a half here, by the way. <laughs> actually, you can order ahead on Franklin's, so if you order now, you might be able to get it for pickup. I hear, I hear like, lots of different things about Franklin's, but the thing about Franklin's that's so good, Bethany, mm -hmm. is it's basically just salt and pepper and smoke, and that's it. Nothing fancy. You know, we even go to places down in Lockhart where they don't serve barbecue sauce. All right, where do we go after barbecue? We went. We ended up going to, by the way, to Mickle, Micklethwaite's mm -hmm. is where we went. Place. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, trip number three. Did we go to for burgers after that? That might have been Mighty Fine. But that was, we went to Mighty Fine. I, should, I didn't want to tell them that, though, because this was the hotly debated one. Oh. Like, what's the best burger in Oof. Austin? So what would you? Is there a place that's good veggie burger? <laughs> um, oh, man, I can tell you about so many I don't know if I've burgers. had any here. Really? Yeah. Um, Do we have, have you had that Impossible Burger? It's very good. Oh, had sorry. That? Yes, of course. Uh, so the places I've had Impossible Burger, I hate to say, um, what's the burger place no one ever wants to talk Hot about? Dottie. Yes. Because <laughs> of the so lines. The, it's on the list for RTX. <laughs> but all of the Impossible Burgers I've had have tasted pretty much the same. So Haymaker, right here by us on Mainer, has a great Impossible Burger, which uh -huh. I love. But it tastes very similar to Hop Dottie. But I wouldn't go to Hop Dottie just for that. What is it? Is it so it kind of looks like meat? It's not lab grown, it, it, right? No, it's it, kind it, of pinkish, but it's all plant-based. It looks and like ground beef and it bleeds and it yeah. crisps up. Yeah. It's really weird. So have we talked about this before on the air? Why are you vegetarian or are you vegetarian or vegan? Vegetarian. I could never live without cheese. Cheese is good. Cheese yeah. is so cheese good. good. Um, I still always, I guess it's part, it's two, it's one part. I just don't have the taste for it. But the bigger part is the animal animal cruelty. Okay. I really do believe in that. So if lab meat was made legal tomorrow, would lab you eat la lab-grown meat? They grow, have you heard about this? No. They grow meat in a lab. How? From cells. So, like, yeah, from it's, stem it's cells basically and cell stuff. cultures. So it never, it, they're like, an animal is never involved. Uh -huh. in or maybe one animal. Meat. What? Maybe one animal early on. <laughs> well, but which then is they, it, one or none? I don't know, let me find out. <laughs> They gotta get the cells from somewhere, right? Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's lethal. They found a very sick animal, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that ties into the first part of it, though. Like, it still grosses me out to think of eating an animal. So when I did eat chicken, even that kind of chicken was had to be, like, finely— sh It was, like, shredded chicken. I wouldn't want to eat, like, a chicken breast or, like a, sl like, a slab. You know what I mean? I have a good friend of mine. She is what I would consider to be a foodie. Okay. In fact, a gourmet foodie. Like, she's a good cook. She likes nice restaurants. She will, she has one rule that I know of at least. She will not eat meat on a bone. She will not have a bone like on her plate. She just mm -hmm. is that like, just that, a reminder that it's an yeah, animal? That meat, was how it was like for me. When I used so, to eat chicken, it was the same way. I'm not going to tear into a wing or anything like that. Oh man, chicken wings are my favorite. Or ribs or anything. I was, I was a vegetarian earlier this year for three, three months and I... Didn't think I would last, and I did not last. But I did try. <laughs> Listen, I mean, I love animals so much, but I, God, I suck. I can't just not eat. Would you eat a cat? I know you love cats. Nope, absolutely not. Okay. I mean, like, listen, like, I understand. There's nothing I could say that would defend the moral argument of eating animals. Yeah. Nothing. Because I, I believe in 100% that we sure. probably should not eat animals. We've evolved past that mm -hmm. to the point where we can eat non animal yeah. foods. Yeah. Clearly, and people do it. But, but at the same time, yeah. I also just, I eat animals. Well, and to yeah. be fair, like everyone that knows me and that's around me knows that I'm not going to, like, you can eat whatever you want around me. I'm never going to point it out and say, you shouldn't eat this. Like, what I do is my business and what you do sure. is and you're allowed to. That's yeah. a good way to be because, it, man, it, is it. It is very easy for people to feel like they're being attacked right. when you just talk about yeah. the things that you do in your life. Yeah, right. and I don't. Yeah. I mean, I just order what I want. No. How like about you? Food kink shaming. Hmm? Where are you at for breast <laughs> burger? What would you say? Best burger. What'd you uh, say, Adam? Oh, I didn't say anything, but go. You go ahead. It's a tough one in Austin. P. Terry is a good one. Okay. In and uh, Out is, I like the burgers in and out. In and Out knockoff. See, I this is we get very contentious about this. I don't care. I don't care who's knocking off who in the situation. You're just asking what good burger is. Okay. I like what you in like. In and Out's a good burger. I don't like In and Out's fries so much. Okay. I feel like there's too much in potato and, and not enough salt. In and Out's fries suck. Uh, yeah. But they're uh, P. Terry's and. I, you know what though? I really like Mighty Fine. Mighty Fine's good. Where is that? It's Do they have a veggie burger? It's, it's a it's a hike to get there. Oh, it's yeah. only like seventy one. We used to go there for lunch a lot. Yep. But uh, burger wise, if you want a vegetarian or vegan burger, mm -hmm. bar none, best vegetarian or vegan burger is from Mother's Cafe. Yeah, Ooh, man. Uh, that's it, in Hyde Park. It, yeah, honestly, it's one of my favorite burgers. Period, and I'm not vegetarian. It's just awesome. It's really good. Okay. Um, but as far as 
regular burgers go. Man, I don't know if I like. I like it's stupid that I like Five Guys so much, but I think Five Guys is up there. Okay, but also uh, Shake Shack. Shake Shack's good. Shake Shack's All these delightful. places you can, except for maybe Mighty Fine, you can eat in every other city totally. in the world. You totally. know what I mean? Um, if you're gonna have, if you want a, a, a quintessential Texas burger experience, we almost did this, but it seemed because it was fast food, we wouldn't do it. Is Water Burger? Yeah. And everyone mm. from Texas loves Water Burger. Yeah. You'll probably recognize the cups, the orange and white striped cups, because they became an asset in some video game library, and you can see them in all kinds of video games. I know the last uh, Resident Evil, they had Water Burger cups everywhere, but they're not. They're not. With Perfect. the logo, oh, okay. they're just the striped orange and white cups. So the instant I saw it, I was like, why do they have Whataburger cups in their house? But they were in the South, right? So I guess it does make sense. All right. Let's round this out really fast. Kay. So then on the video, the fourth place we went was for margaritas and queso. But we just went to a place off Old Dwarf. Where's <laughs> the best queso in Austin? Do you eat cheese? Oh, my gosh. This is so hard. Can, do they have time to drive to San Antonio? Best margarita then. Where would you go to drink? Oh, gosh. That's hard, too. Um, El Alma has good queso flamiato mm -hmm. and good margaritas. Have you been there? It's on Barton. Matt's El Ranch is good, too. Um, that one's, I think El Alma is a pretty good. I think we've Mexican been there. Restaurant. I think that, yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's uh, awesome. They have a little rooftop patio. Then we went for pizza. What would you get for pizza? Mm. Home Slice is like the only option. Even I would say Home good. Slice, so, which is what you... Well, hold on. Bernie back up. He just said Home Slice isn't very good. Uh, okay, I should say from like an East Coast perspective, if you're coming from like... Shut the, oh, Okay, go ahead. If you're, coming from the, <laughs> if you're coming from the East Coast and you go and spend... Like these are like $25 to $30 pizzas. This, one of my favorite things in the world about Home Slice is that Blaine, who tracks every gram of everything he eats all week, then and on Sunday, he eats an entire one of these. And this, I think, is the medium, right? The large. Is the large? Yeah. He's a, Blaine will eat an entire one of these every single Sunday. I'm not saying that, okay. That's it's, a cheat It's day not bad it. pizza, but it's super expensive and it tastes like anything you can get in the East Coast. So if you live in like Philly, New York, tri state area. Yeah. Which is if you, if you can't yeah. get to the but East Coast. But you're traveling to come to Texas. So like if you, I'm just saying, if you're coming from there, don't bother. Oh, probably. So, they used to ship in water for it. So Via 313 is what you would say. Via I've 3 never been there. I like Via 313. Via 313 is nice. We need to say, okay, fine. We will it's take it out of Via 313. Listen, man. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna order. I was gonna say queso. Order. Queso though, torches has the best. Queso. <laughs> what about expensive? Torches, even though expensive. I don't like it as a restaurant overall, has great queso. So great good. Queso. It's, uh, so many quesos in Texas are just Velveeta and Rotel, and then torches is like unique. Then we added one. We went for coffee. We went to that stupid Joe's coffee shop that has mm -hmm. the "I love you so much" sign that everybody mm -hmm. takes a photo in front of. So we just thought we had to do that. We actually, I so think, that's, is that your favorite coffee? Place? We did that for the thumbnail. I actually like the one on Second Street. There's a Joe's on Second Street okay. that I like. I like. Any normal coffee shop. My favorite one in the whole world is, and my oldest son, we go there every time we go downtown. It's a place called The Hideout. Uh, it's downtown Austin. And in it's fact, walking uh, distance I have, to convention uh, for the center. last couple podcasts, I've been wearing uh, just different Austin shirts. I actually got them at a little gift shop that's right off Congress. If you want to go see where the old Rooster Teeth office used to be, it's now a loft hotel at 7th and Congress, mm -hmm. right by the Capitol. Uh, there's a, you'll know where the Rooster Teeth office used to be because there's this little coffee shop called The Hideout. And when JD was growing up, we would go there and he learned to drink tea and would have muffins and stuff. <laughs> so we always go back to that place. But I do like Joe's. I like any place that isn't like a super boutique coffee place because they all serve this uh, – like typically it's anything that's Ethiopian coffee that's very acidic. And to me, I just taste like I'm drinking tomatoes, oh. which is so weird because the acidity of it, okay. my brain just interprets it that way. Hmm. So I always have to have her try coffee before we go anywhere. <laughs> Although there's a place, it's maybe walking distance. It'd be a long walk, but it's a place called Halcyon that's downtown coffee place. They do s'mores and it's amazing. Is and it on 4th Street? Yeah. That's yeah. not too bad of a hike. No. I don't think, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff going, going on to, over uh, there, too. Where did we go? The, we got the gigantic plate of mac and cheese. That was also uh, on vlog day. That was like the end. That was Frank. We got poutine from yep. Barbara. Yeah, we, B oh, Barbara, like we were like six meals in at this point. We went to Frank, which is just, we just chose a place we liked. We got liked. hot dogs there, right? We got hot dogs there. Where else are you going to go for hot dogs in Austin? Uh, but we chose that place because it was for the vlog for RTX and it was close to the convention center And then Barbara just said we saw a plate of poutine actually by a group of fans who was next to us mm. and uh, They offered Barb one of them and she took one. She goes. Oh, that's so good. I miss it I go I will give you what I say like 50 bucks. It's like a hundred dollars if she would eat an was entire a of order of poutine it's after two. five <laughs> meals we <laughs> eat it. Yeah, She tried and it was it hurt her it hurt her real bad. And we had Gordo's <laughs> after that. And then for, if we went for dessert, where would you go for dessert in Austin? Because we went to Gordo's. The donut-based uh, right where? Amy's. Amy's? Amy's, Amy's, Amy's a good call. 
Sweet Ritual, it's a vegan ice cream place. I know we're talking mm-hmm. a lot about vegan vegetarian stuff, but just on ice cream standard, it's delicious. Like, it's it's my favorite ice cream spot. Nice. Uh, more so than Amy. Like, I don't know, man. It's so good. Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't have known unless, like, I went there and someone's like, hey, this is vegan. It's that good. You ever go to Lick? Oh, I, I like mm-hmm. Lick a lot. They'll they have be like, weird here's, stuff. Here's your artichoke ice cream. Yeah. yeah. Here's your Ooh. basil. Here's your olive. And I don't yeah. think I would like that. Some of it's good. Yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, very different. There's, yeah. there's two things I would add to your list that's right downtown. Gus's Fried Chicken. It's it's great call. Like well, that's un- right by the convention fried center. Chicken. Um, great call. And there's a place called Lucky's that's pretty close. Okay. Um, and they serve like pizza sandwiches and also like Italian pizzas. Delicious. Hmm. And if you ever, we used to eat here all the time. If you uh, if you ever in the mood for something super fancy, we could eat there during lunch when we were downtown. So it was a lot cheaper. There's a place called Perry's Steakhouse. They have a pork chop that looks like something out of a Flintstones cartoon. It's the Friday pork chop it's, lunch. It's gigantic. Yeah. It's like literally three different parts and they like bring it out and they slam it down. It's huge. And then there's a place right across the street. I was gonna from... say, I don't get invited to that Friday pork chop lunch very often. <laughs> <laughs> no, we get the vegan pork chop. We'll, we'll give you a call. The uh, <laughs> the eggplant chop. But uh, uh, the Roaring Fork, which is right next to the old office. I love the Roaring Fork. So that was Monty's favorite place. And Monty, when we were like finishing like season eight of Red versus Blue, he in particular loved these cedar plank salmon. And I would just mm-hmm. go over and order those like two or three at a time and just like while he's working, I just give them to him. Those are my favorite. That's my favorite thing there. Is it? Yeah. You think you eat fish? I do eat fish. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's great. Yeah. For sure great. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that? Actually- Yay! <laughs> was like you were catching her in something? No, no. I was just, I was surprised. Do you find that people will try to test you? No. We're like, do you eat fish? Ugh. No, usually people will say, oh, well, you're vegan. And I'm like, I, you don't understand what that means then because I still eat eggs and cheese and yes. all the other things. There was a member of the community who's been on the podcast before, Nat. She was in the... Las Vegas vlog as well. She's one of our ambassadors. She's one of our ambassadors this year. That's a great segue. I was about to mention that. So <laughs> she's one of our ambassadors for RTX this year as well. Have we announced who all of them are going to be? We have. Okay. We announced Hannah as well. Is going to be one of them? That's going to be fantastic. I can't wait. But uh, Nat is hardcore vegan. Like, and I think she'd be okay with me saying this. Uh, we, I, I took her to Mother's when she was in town one time. And we were, she was leaving for the airport. So we went there for lunch. She has like apps where she will look up companies that tell she's not just like eat the product, it's got to be vegan, but the company can't be involved oh. with any kind of testing on animals that or anything like that. Yeah, so she's like five levels deep at that point. Wow, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. mothers well, passed her, the though. test though. Good job. Mar- good. Mothers was a pure vegan, yeah. Yeah. good, probably also one of the few restaurants that has existed in Austin the entire time that I've been here. There's not that many. A lot of them have closed. So it's like I always feel obligated to like bring people to like really small mm-hmm. Austin places and they're all like just running out of money because mm-hmm. property taxes are going up and they can't renovate their restaurant. So it looks yeah. like you're like walking to a, to a restaurant from 1995. <laughs> but like Thundercloud Subs. You ever been to Thundercloud Subs that's like nice? It feels <laughs> like I used to work in Hoagie Shop over 10 years ago. Feels like a hoagie shop from over 10 years ago. Yeah, all great. hand-lettered signs yeah. and everything like that. It's great. But it's awesome. Awesome stuff. So if you're coming into town for RTX, check out that vlog and listen to this advice here. I I, I would say if you're going to go for pizza, give three via 313 a try. But yeah. you got to try Home Slice at some point. Would yes. you add Chewy's to the list if people want super cheesy Mexican food? Oh, if you want super Tex-Mex. We didn't do Tex-Mex. It's also pretty awesome Yeah, Chewy's is pretty good. I don't get, like, I don't want to say I don't get Tex-Mex. But like none of it has ever been impressed. It's just like, ah, it's food. Yeah, cool. It's never like, ah, it's Well, you grew up great. with it, right? Where'd yeah. you grow up? I grew up in Philly. Oh, in okay. Philly. Yeah. Hence the pizza snobbery over here. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it's not pizza snobbery. Just, that, that is expensive pizza. <laughs> it is not. I bought a couple of home sliced pizzas and spent over $50. That's too much money for pizza. Via 313, it sounds ridiculous. I think it's, I want to say it's like 25 bucks for an eight slice pizza. That's so but it's, expensive. But it's, it's hard to explain what it is. It's like a loaf of bread. With that like pizza, it, it, it's incre- it's pretty incredible. You just, I mean, I don't know how to describe it, but you have to, you have to, you have to try it at some point. Bernie, life. are you salivating? A little bit. <laughs> I got this fucking pizza here, Christian. I can't stand this anymore. It's killing me. <laughs> it's killing me. It's killing me. All right. Um, so, Ash, how are you? Uh, how are you doing? You uh, you have a recent development in your life. I do. Do you want to talk about? It? She's I like have, a Disney princess. I don't I know, know what's what going she's on. Say too. I love this. I have babies. Birds. I have baby birds. Yeah. <laughs> They're so cute. There's three of them. They're learning to fly. 
They, the Peter Hayes, by the way, when you were talking, went, whoa! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I thought he was going to report something the, first. Yeah, we had, uh, we've had sparrows set up nests near our house before. Uh, a few months ago, some sparrows made a nest, and they laid some eggs in it, and the eggs didn't hatch, and I was just heartbroken. And so I saw they had set up a nest in an umbrella that we've had out in our back patio. It's just been, like, on its side being stored because we were having some some work done. Mm-hmm. And thought, well, this umbrella's not going anywhere anytime soon. Every day, checking the eggs, make sure the eggs are good. Oh, the eggs are good. The eggs hatched. Then there were pink, ugly little lumps. Oh my God. Birds are the <laughs> exception to every baby animal being cute. They are not. Like, there's got to be an baby evolutionary advantage to the babies being cute. That way, other stuff won't hurt them. Like, you're like, oh, it's so cute. Baby birds are just like, mm. they're just horrible. They look they're like, like see through. They look like chicken nuggets before they get cooked. <laughs> just like pink lumps. With like dark black blue eyes like that all, show through just, their eyelids. And they're like, oh, lumpy. They animals. stick out Dude, over I don't their know, heads. Man. Well, the picture you showed me. We love them too. But they what, so how old were they then? So, uh, oh, oh, oh that's so cute. Oh. This is them. I know this is beyond this. This is them yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. So cute. They're, uh, they're now week and a, maybe a week and a half, maybe two weeks. They all have little mustaches? They have it like, looks like it does. They have like male pattern baldness. They'll have like fluffy, <laughs> fluffy feathers in the back. <laughs> Frank but, Reynolds hair. Yeah, but it's slowly receding. I'd be like the straight feathers are kind of taking over. Yeah, so you I were panicked th- yesterday. Oh. One of the birds decided that it didn't feel like being in the nest anymore. And I, I saw it on the ground and I was like chasing it around like, oh, no, you poor little baby. I'm going to get you back she, in your nest. Let, let me, let, Getting on gloves on so that I'm not going to get it all them, right? smelly. We got to preface this though, too, because Ashley established such a relationship with these things. She knew when the parent birds were coming. I thought the the male bird just took off, but she knew when they were coming. And because we had we were having some construction work done, we had they had to move the umbrella, and she's like, "You can't." And I was like, "Hey, we can't tell them. (laughs) You're not going to delay them for a week, so let's figure something out here." So she negotiated with like the parent birds to move the nest. She like moved the nest to another location. I was like, "There's no way the parents are going to go to the new location." They absolutely did. Like wow. Ashley let them to the new that. location, and they were there so for a couple days. I was going to ask you about days. that because you talked it about the like construction. So happy. <laughs> She's so happy. I'm going to cry. But I saw them feeding the babies from the new spot, and they found them. It was the best thing. Except now they've all left the nest, so yeah. that was pointless. Are they, are they, no, they're, 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 it's good though. They're on there. No, it's no. good. Well, they're not not yet. Their parents seem to be hurting them. Yeah. Their parents are now like there's one on either side being like. Squawk, squawk, squawk. Mm-hmm. You can't, like, do not go here. You are oh. going to get eaten or fall off a thing. They've already been suicidal. I had to pull them out of, a like, a, a pit under our stairs. Did they give any, any trouble from Nutmeg? Or the, no, the, Nutmeg the, is or currently an indoor cat. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. She's indoor only for a little while because good. I think that, gra- like, baby birds that can't fly quite yet are the only thing she could possibly hunt. Yeah. <laughs> no, she, and also, when we had that baby squirrel that was coming around for a while, and that baby squirrel is now off. Living independently, she would sit outside the glass door, where right outside of it is where we'd feed the squirrel, and she would just walk by and see the squirrel, clearly see the squirrel, and just go, "All right," and keep walking. Like <laughs> she's not—I don't think she has a hunting instinct in her. Whatever, yeah, whatever that is that most cats have, I think she skipped it. You, Bethany, you grew up in Texas, but then moved away to the East Coast, right? Yes, and then came back. Yeah. Okay. So it's not, you've been through the experience, and she's been through the experience, and Adam, you and Ashley, of oh. experiencing a Texas-sized cockroach for the first time as an oh, adult. Oh, yeah. That's disgusting. Yeah. So do you remember? I can remember the first time she ran into one. Well, she's like, what is that? Was that, that? recently? No. No. Oh. This first no. This is when I moved down. I was not expecting. I know they say everything's bigger in Texas. I didn't know it, they meant that. It's pretty horrifying. Dude, uh, the, the first time I saw like a, a black beetle here. It was like four inches long. Mm-hmm. These things are crazy. The bugs here are huge. Yeah. Also scorpions. I have. I found scorpions. Oh, I saw your house. thing from the other. D- oh no no no. Yeah. So I had. So we've. So I've only seen scorpions three times, uh, in the the house that we're in. One we saw in the garage, and Bernie taught me how to squish them to make sure they crunch really good, Oof. and said that it's a good thing to do because it sets they, they their their uh, reproductive cycle is so long. That you make a lot of headway if you just give them a good crunch. You, that's why when they build a new house, <laughs> it's like they stir up the ground and yep. a lot of scorpions will come up. But you can kind of, I was told this, you can get ahead of them just by literally by stepping on them. Is that they take a long time to reproduce oh, right. and they have long life cycles. Oh. So you actually do make progress. Versus not, what? Well, they're hard to kill with insecticide. Um, oh, okay. You, know, you can use like 
bo- and, like the cleaner, the the powder cleaner, borax. Borax, yeah. and they have that. Uh, what's the stuff they use for bed bugs? It's the some kind of earth. A gr- I want to say like diaphoresis earth, but I just hmm. completely made up that term. I'll look it up. You, you you keep looking it up. Yeah. So the the second time I saw a scorpion was in our bathtub. Oof. Went into the bathroom in the morning, and somehow overnight a scorpion got into the bathtub and couldn't get out. So we just sort of left him there. That stresses me for a out. while to see what would happen. Eventually, he did disappear, which is a little concerning. But we found out they can't like it can't climb. Scorpions can't climb non-porous surfaces, so they can't climb glass, and they can't climb fiberglass. So I guess one thing that a lot of people do is, uh, for like kids' beds and stuff, they'll actually put like glass mason jars. Mm -hmm. Uh, They'll put each leg of the bed in a mason jar, because scorpions can't climb it. Interesting. Wow. Real weird. So I don't know know where it went. uh, Down the drain, I suppose? No, it probably got somewhere else. No, I, I came and got them for you. You did? Remember, I fished him out. You talking about? No, you're talking about the you latest one. The scorpion the out latest of the rain. I mean, no, the the one before the latest one. Yeah, why'd you do that? Yeah, they get in the bathtub and they can't get out. Right. On a we just basis. left it. I don't know where it went. Yeah, you oh. should have done that. Yes, we'll see. Maybe but the I latest will not be one. Over. <laughs> yeah. I was taking a bath. It was relaxing. It was really nice. I was I was playing on my switch. Just like a horror movie. And I then I just even. felt something drop on my head. <laughs> it fell from the ceiling. <laughs> something fell from the ceiling. It's look, I get it. There's bugs right now. That like cockroaches will wander in from outside. It happens and it sucks and it's the worst thing ever. So I'm like, and then it fell like on my chest in the tub, and I looked down and was like, that's a scorpion, and I had to go ping, <laughs> get it into the water, and then just watch it drown. And Ping then go, hey, Bernie. It, by the way, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm saying, Ping was you flicking it for audio listeners. Yeah, that was, I uh, had to ping it, ping, into the tub, watch it drown, and then go get Bernie to verify that it was, in fact, a baby scorpion. It was like this big, is a baby. which I understand is a bad thing. Well, yeah, well, then I showed her that's like, Scorpions have a lot of babies, so oh, probably gosh. a bunch around. Oh. So, I, they carry them on their back, too. Yeah, it's do. super creepy. That's nice. Yeah, like a big oh, mama so scorpion gross. and a bunch of little babies. Little babies get tired of walking around. If you guys pull around. the photo of that, warn us in advance. No, don't do that. that is a horrible thing to I kind of got to see it, though. It's it's super, yeah. It's like, you know, did you ever see the uh, subreddit, Nature is Metal? Yes. Yes, that one's hardcore. Yeah. It's just like yeah, horrible there's, scenes There's, there's been nature. very few things that make me, like, cringe on the internet, but a spider molting made me cringe. <laughs> yeah, was it a like a tarantula? Yeah, it was a tarantula big one? molting. There was a video I saw of a giant spider crab. Uh, with massively long legs and watching it like wiggle out of its yeah mol- no. molting is gross yeah molting's gross dude yeah. that's what b- the birds are doing right they're molting yeah they're their- they're losing all their little baby feathers but they're not crawling out of their own skin no like, no cicadas are doing that that now. would feel good though wouldn't it Mm-mm. like if one day your skin just kind of hardened up and then you kind of like started to wiggle then out you're of it, you kind of crack and then. What's that? Warning. Warning. Oh, oh that's it. no. Okay. Oh. That's <laughs> terrifying. Oh, God. It's horrible, right? That makes you want to throw up. I know. Why is that Why? so horrible? Have you, ever, have you ever gotten bit? We're, by- we're looking at a picture of a scorpion with one, two, three, four, what, 15 babies on its back? Oh. And they all have little bitty tails. They're all going to grow up to be just like their dad or mom. Hey, have you ever been bitten by a scorpion or anything I of have. the like? Yeah, by the way, scorpion, we should point this out. Scorpions in Texas are kind of like... Kind of like a bee sting, but you don't. People tend to be not allergic to them, so it's just kind of like, ouch. Yeah, they can't kill you or anything. No, I don't know of anybody. It's just about that kind of level of pain. Oh yeah, it's Hmm. not that bad. It's just you. What when you see what stung you, you freak out. Yeah, it's horrifying. I'm not sure that I've ever been stung by anything. I don't think really. Like I I thought, I I think I got stung. I thought, thought it might have got stung by a bee one time, but it might have just bit me because I looked at my arm and it was fine. Do bees? I don't know. Is that a thing? I don't know. I get stung by bee. I, I've yeah. got no, no, no. They, do they bite? They don't bite. I don't think they bite. I got stung I by know. a wasp Hornets. here, and I got stung by a jellyfish once when I was young. Ooh, that sucks. Ow! But I remember I was a kid, and so I was so Im- I was too embarrassed to tell adults, which is a weird thing. Like I should be comfortable, but I didn't tell anyone. And then later, it was so like had the burn. Huge, it was all in the, my inner thigh. What was that jellyfish? Yeah. And so you didn't tell anybody. Wow. Did you know For like a the, while? I had were a you feeling because I pee on you. I, I don't Isn't remember if I knew that at the oh. time that like that was an option. <laughs> right. You might, like, might I mean, not have made his way to you. Totally would have. Although it was on my thigh. I could have just peed on myself. Solid point. Could have. <laughs> just I mean, let it all go. Have an excuse to do it. Why not? Right? I mean, I have before. <laughs> so the thing I was talking about earlier, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this correctly. It's diatomaceous 
earth. It's some kind of like powderized fossil stone. And it's basically just sand that you spread out and you form a barrier with it. And when bugs hit it, it's like it's just basically like walking on glass to them. Like it tears them up and then they can't they end up dying or they can't travel through it, period. All, all bugs mm. or just like specific I think they I think they bugs. specifically use it for bed bugs. Interesting. My friend got bed bugs one time and uh, I felt really bad for him. I, I recently, I recently, I say this too. I recently did a thing where they gave me a code for a thing. I had a code. It has nothing to do with roosters whatsoever. They gave me a code. It's like a secure thing and I get a code and I punch in the code and it unlocks the thing. The code is my, it's four digit code. It's my birthday. And that's the thing. I said, well, can I change it to, there's another four digit code I like to use for stuff. Uh, and they said, no, it's just, it's, we just do birthdays. And then I left and I was thinking, <laughs> I, it's super easy to guess. I mean, yeah. it's like how many so months insecure. would you have to go through before you get somebody's birthday right. that, that yeah. has the code at this thing? So, yeah, it's like that's not a good system. <laughs> not a good or system wouldn't there be a bunch of people with the same code? Yeah, right. And then how does it identify so how does who's that, who? Yeah, I don't know. They, I guess it's just whether or not you get in. It wasn't a very, like, like high security facility, but yeah. still, <laughs> I can't help but, like, pick apart when I hear something. It's just like a bad algorithm, essentially. Well, bad plus. Design. Plus, you're mad at him because you got the one that you want to use. What's that? Plus, you can be upset with well, you got the code that you want to use, and there'd be way more options if you could just pick your own. Oh, code. I know, right? Yeah, I guess if it's a four-digit code, you can type in a thousand, you'll get yeah. one, probably, right? But it's like imagine you have nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine entries you'd have to go through to break a four-digit code. But if, if it's based on birthdays, this, you only have to go 65? up to twelve hundred, and or, you only go to thirty. Out of every hundred, right. basically. I'm just so. going to trust that math. There you go, Bethany. It's right. Trust me. In February, you only have to do 28. So you're good. <laughs> you're totally good. It's easy. So mm -hmm. you, are you happy about the birds? Birds are good? I'm pretty happy about the birds. I'm happy that they... I had to go on online and read read up when they left the nest to figure out that that's actually normal. That they will normally leave the nest and they'll be on the ground for a day or two. Seems like a stupid evolutionary thing to me. Because they're still snacks at mm -hmm. that point. They can't, they still can't get off the ground. And now they like can't test. get back into their nest. That's a test. What kind of test? Uh, if you can survive on the ground for three days, you can make it. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy that the birds are going to be grown up and there'll be three new adult sparrows and they're going to call me mom. Aww. It's cute. They're, I, People. I, she was learning a lot about birds. She was telling me when they were walking around in the backyard, I was like, well, this is terrible. She goes, no, this is what they do. They do this for like four or five days. And I was thinking, they're going to die. Some, just anything can eat them, you know? Like a nutmeg. Everything eats birds. Every single thing eats birds, if birds, they can. Birds eat birds. And birds eat, bir <laughs> birds eat birds. Birds eat everything. It's just crazy. It's like, do some animals, like, do some animals, are they vegetarian because they just can't catch anything? Like, mm. I've seen videos where a cow will eat, like, a chicken walking around. Oh, that's really? Yeah, the that cow just that. decides. Oh, I don't like that. I've not seen that at all. Yeah, the cow just decides, I'm eating this one. Or a pelican eating a pigeon. I've seen that. Yeah. Hmm. It's just crazy. That seems like a power move. I saw a thing where a, a hawk was in a cage, and there was, like, one of those, I don't know, like, one of those cranes. Is this, that, I don't, is this, is this horrible? It's like, it had a piece of meat, and it was, like, tempting the bird outside the cage. And he, the bird ended up getting away, spoiler. But like eventually, of the, enough of this back and forth, then the, the long neck bird got too close and the, the raptor bird, the predatory bird, got it. Like, I was like, oh, that bird's dead. Uh, I thought it was going to get pulled through the fence, but no, it got away. It was okay. Uh. I, uh, I feel bad. I, like, growing up, I loved Planet Earth. But when Planet Earth 2 came out, watching nature do its thing and like watch animals eat other animals, I got too sad. And I can't watch Planet Earth because of it. I want to watch an edited version where there's no animals eating other animals. <laughs> Although some of oh, the really? uh, some of the things Dude, they have like are amazing. Was it was it Planet Earth two or Blue Planet or something? There was Wait. a clip that went around uh, a while ago. I of just watched this. The lizard escaping all the snakes. That's, oh. I, watched, I watched that. And that, that was amazing. That was one of the early cool. episodes. But that, that was still like was seeing, crazy. seeing those lizards get like caught. I was like, this sucks. Yeah, yeah. there were some of the lizards early on that got caught. They had to establish the danger though. Yeah, but it. it I don't know, man. There's. I shouldn't. It shouldn't bother me so much, but it does. I yeah. was just on the edge of my seat, just hoping for that lizard to get away, and it was so close, so many times. And you have to, he's leaping across this big gap, and a snake is snapping at him as he goes. It's it's really dramatic. It was 
really cool. It's, it's, it's more dramatic than like any action movie sequence in any movie. It's incredible the footage they got. Hmm. They must have cut together like two or three lizards doing it, and I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> yeah. But just watching that lizard with the feet going like that. Oh, here he goes. Here we go. So go, th- lizard, they're born go. and they have to oh, run to the ocean, man. I think, or run to the yeah. forest. Agreed. And he's just hauling it, and then all these snakes wait for these new baby lizards to come running. Because they're easy pickings. And they come, the snakes come out of everything. Oh, oh that's all they got. got. Oh, so, oh, no. Sorry about that. Stop there. So, uh, oh, God. That's just the one that escaped. Well, you know, honestly, <laughs> the most things, like 95%, 99% of things that have ever lived, they ended up dying because something else ate them. Like, mm. that's... What happens? They, we're humans. We get to die of old age, you know. <laughs> but old age in nature just means you slow down enough to where something eats you. Probably. What do you What do you think? Like the number is? Do you think old age is the number one cause of death? Do you think it's like for people? Yeah, I think it's probably like heart disease or cancer or something like that. Yeah, but you get those when you're older, right? I mean, not not Generally. like diabetes, but you know, yeah, heart disease and cancer. Yeah, I, would say. Yeah, I think that. I think, or do you that, think natural? Like, I would I would like to think that natural causes. I don't think they classify old age though as a. Is a thing. Right, because eventually wouldn't it be so just some type of natural you. cause? That makes sense. Like you have a heart attack and, and that's you, yeah. heart attack. you were old versus you had a heart attack because you had heart disease? I guess, I guess, yeah. Or a stroke or an yeah. aneurysm mm-hmm. or whatever it is. It's like something probably yeah. happens. What but is death by natural causes? What is that? What do you think that is? What do you think someone didn't us? murder you. Death by natural causes. Death by natural causes, as recorded by coroners and on death certificates and associated documents, is the end result of an illness or an internal malfunction of the body not directly caused by external forces. So cancer would be natural, read natural causes. Again. Interesting. And we read that last part. It's A- and not directly caused by external forces. So, okay. So, so not an accident. Some, right, would, okay. Okay. Would, so, well, like, well, a snake. Would, would that mean some <laughs> types of cancer? You're trying to make it to the beach and the snake grabs you. Do you think would some types of, types of cancer be classified as natural causes? Because they're like, oh, you, you smoked a lot and you it's got an illness. cancer. It's mm-hmm. the end result of an illness. Okay. Or an internal malfunction. So natural cause is kind of like a misnomer Catch-all. a little bit. Yeah. It's just kind of like this, like no, like a normal death. Like you just like reach an exp- expiration point. And you're just like, uh, I'm done. Yeah, Sorry. whatever. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But you still have to die of something. You always have. Like, uh... Uh, HIV doesn't kill anybody. Most people die because of pneumonia. That's the cause of death. Right. Because oh, it okay. just shuts down your your body's ability to fight anything. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And that that leads to you getting something that eventually yeah, kills you. Yeah, that makes sense. But like, and likewise, it's you know natural causes are old age. You don't actually die of a. You hit a certain time. And you're <laughs> like, well, that's it. My watch is going off. I got to die now. <laughs> you know, you'll die from something like heart failure or you're more susceptible to cancer. I don't know. This is grim. This has been a really sad podcast, yeah. actually. <laughs> so let's talk about the best hospitals and funeral homes in Austin. <laughs> where, 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 where should you go? Well, you know what just wrapped up was uh, San Diego Comic Con. There was fun stuff happening there. Yeah, there was. It was really superheroes and I don't Aquaman like Aquaman and Shazam. Comic. I did ten years of Comic Con, and I feel like that was my time. And I did it, and I went every year for ten years, and I was done. And I never looked back, and I never wanted to go back to Comic Con. That being said, this was the first time when I was reading about like people at social media being at Comic Con and what they were doing. It seemed like a lot of fun. You were hmm. missing out. My, I think my brain was tricking me though. Ah, uh-uh. why? Like was when it you have a baby, me? baby keeps you up all night. But then like two years later, you're like, having a baby wasn't so bad. So then you have another baby, <laughs> and then it's like, oh yeah, this is awful. This is. So what was what year was the last year? Uh, like 2011. Oh, 11. Okay. That's been a while then. Yeah, well, we we were there this year, which we hadn't been in a couple of years. Rooster Teeth. We'd how do we get our booth back? We had Bendy and the Ink Machine. But how do we get a booth? Because the I, real estate in Comic Con is so tough. We've always had it. We've never oh. gotten rid of it. Or never got rid of it. Yeah, got it. I know what you mean. Okay. Didn't, didn't Mega sixty four? Yeah, we gave it to our pals year? at Mega sixty four. Really? <laughs> Another great reason not to go to Comic Con. <laughs> Eric actually came to us from Mega sixty four. It's true. He and, was. Uh, uh, it turns out he was payment for the Comic Con booth. He would. <laughs> it was. A, it was a trade. It was uh, one booth and an employee to be named later. But uh, he used to bug the shit out of me. <laughs> I think he's Comic-Con. told. Me, I think he's told me that before. He would just. He was because rel- Comic Cons. You. It. It yeah. seems like a weekend con. It's not. It starts on fucking Wednesday. There's like a preview night, and if yep. you're exhibiting, you have to be there for preview night. And then we were always right next to Mega 64, and it's like this is like this little pole with that shitty little paper thin curtain on it, you know, but like at waist level. And Eric was always just right on the other side of it, just like <laughs> yeah, 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 y
yeah, 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 for fucking five days straight. <laughs> I was like, if that, yeah, I said, if that guy's working and I do not want to be in the booth because I can't take it, I can't take it. Yep. Have you come around on Eric? Yeah. You feel better? Oh my God, that? so much, <laughs> so much. It's crazy. It's like, actually, when I, you start to work with him, it's like breath of fresh air, you know? It's like, I feel like a win win, like a double win because now I realize he's not. Entirely annoying, and uh, he's an amazing entirely. producer. If you're listening, Eric, you're not producer. entirely annoying. Not entirely. He got to go to L.A. But watch I mean, it. What? Yeah, he's in L.A. right now. He got to take the trip. All of us don't get the free brunch. And the brunch. Oh, and I'm the brunch queen. You are too. Right. Why don't we hold our own brunch? <gasps> oh, I have so much work to do. <laughs> <laughs> you could go to brunch anyway. You're just mad. I know. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. I'm. I'm going to do. I'm going to. Uh, go with my son tomorrow. Which and one? We, uh, JD, because he's the one who's interested in doing this. He has no interest whatsoever. Probably not a good idea to take him either, because we're going. Uh, we are going to take sailing lessons. I've always wanted to know how to sail, and JD's very interested in it. And Teddy would probably get us killed. You know, he'd probably yeah. run us to ground or something like that. So <laughs> I, I sailed with my dad growing up. It's like the best father son bonding thing ever. Oh really? It's yeah. So we're, much fun. We're so looking forward to it. And then after, you know, we take the lessons, I'll take Teddy out and then we'll do some stuff. Probably in a much smaller craft. Uh we're doing like we never done like I've done like little like catfish, you know, mm -hmm. or sunfish, excuse me. Like that kind of thing. Um but I've never done like a big sailboat. We got to do one last year uh with my buddy Drew, you know Drew from Two Filter, the streamies guy. And uh, I just like I've always wanted to go back since then. So that sounds yeah. nice. Yeah. So How do you know all the beautiful knowledge? Good now? lord! <laughs> I'm glad you asked that. It's so it's 108 today. Yep. <laughs> and on the lake tomorrow, it's going to drop. Cold front must be coming in. It's going to be 100. So Ooh, bonus. I got to pack a jacket because <laughs> it's going to be. By the way, Barbara was wearing a sweater in L.A. She always does that though. She's crazy. Yeah. It's, still, it's hot in the LA, studio. Like, can be cold. Last weekend though. it was like 100 plus. There. Yeah. Studio yeah. can be cold. Yeah. 108 is too hot, right? Oh, that's yeah. just insane. Especially when you get in your car and it reads 115. Oh, been, yeah. I didn't even think about that today. It. It's been hard. But um, at least uh, at least you'll be on a lake and you can dunk yourself in the water if you yeah. get too hot. The first ever Comic-Con that we went to as exhibitors uh, was 2003. Maybe it was 2004. Uh, went with uh, Jason Saldana, who plays Tucker. And we drove my pickup and attached our merch in a trailer and drove it out to San Diego. Which meant we had to drive through West Texas in the middle of July. And there is a point like about you go west of Austin. If you start from the east side of, of Texas, you get Houston, you get Dallas, then you get Austin and San Antonio, which is right in the middle of the state. Mm -hmm. Then nothing like for six hours until you get to El Paso. And yeah. which has been then you're basically in New Mexico at that point. And uh did they have the thing back then? Oh, you know, with the, all the billboards to stop yeah. and see the thing? Yeah, yeah. that's been around forever, <laughs> man. But uh, it was, I remember one time on the dial, it said it was 116 degrees outside. Did we, there were literally signs saying there is not a gas station for 140 miles. And we're hauling this big trailer in the heat in a pickup truck, an F-150. I, I was watching the fuel gauge physically move. Like oh. I could watch it slowly dropping and it was freaking me out. I thought we're just going to like run out of gas and we're going to die of something, you know, exposure <laughs> out here. Did you? No, we were good. We made it all the way to San He's Diego. He's alive. That, I, I had that, that trip. I took a trip earlier this year where we drove from Colorado up into Nebraska. And we hit that point where, like, oh, we don't need to go to a gas station right now. We'll hit one soon. And then there wasn't one. There just kept yep. kept not being one. We were in an SUV and it was, it was like really cold. Not that it would have mattered that much, but it, we get, got down to like nine miles remaining on the gas gauge. Like, holy crap, we finally found one. But that, that is such an intense, horrifying experience when it shouldn't be. Yeah. It's like, oh, just stop and get gas. But you never, never really think about it until you're yeah. in the middle of nowhere. I just can't road trip. I think my, we were talking about this the other day. I think my limit's four hours, which I know is not very far. But I just don't think I'm, I should be in a car very long. I love road trips. They're so come, it's oh hot God. in Texas right now. Interior. <gasps> it's oh, it's hot. 100. Oh, oh my so God. How much do those, uh, those little things you put in your, your windshield actually help the, that reflect the sun? Oh, I just put one up. Do they help? So I, I literally, this is my first day using it, and oh. I'll let you know. Yeah. Yes. So my dad, like, my dad did about a billion different jobs. First, he was a priest. He was a priest that was, like, 45. Then when he left the priesthood, he was a carpenter. That led to him being— It's appropriate. Uh, he worked in insulation up north because there was, like, a government program where none of those homes in Rochester, New York, they were all so old, and they had been built with modern insulation. So he would do this thing. Like, cellulose insulation not the pink stuff but he would like could blow it into the crevices of mm -hmm. buildings and 
help him with energy. So he got involved with energy. When he came down to Texas, he was involved with that. That led to him uh, working on the uh, particle collider in Dallas, mm -hmm. and then he was a physics professor uh, at that same nice. time. But it's funny because that sticks with me, all those little things I pick up from my dad, and that silver, that radiant barrier, it, like, reflects radiant energy. So just having, like, a shade is one thing, but having an actual reflective one yep. does a lot more. So that's why I'm using this, like, bright silver thing in my windshield today. And uh, I don't know. I'll see. I can check my thing right now and see how hot it is out there. Uh, so I have never used one, but I've had a car here for about, like, f five years almost, and... I have like the the dashboard is sort of like soft like that soft rubbery material But because it's been so hot in Texas It's all the moisture has gone out of that and my dashboard is literally disintegrating. Yeah So like I'm, I'm just thinking ahead of like when I get a new car I'm gonna get one of those and like tint my windows because it sucks dude like in Philly you yeah. need the undercoat Yeah, and in Texas you need the top coat you right. need something to protect you from the top. Yeah, so when I was a teenager uh I had a, a Toyota Camry and my dad got me a dash cover it was it was molded to that model of Camry, but it was basically carpet. But it it uh, there was an adhesive on the back, and it basically like taped down mm -hmm. onto my dashboard. I wonder if it was some theoretically some sort of protective thing like that. Except I just looked like like an idiot with a, a carpeted carpet. dashboard. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, well the uh, the car that you had growing up, your first car, everyone had a pretty shitty car, right? For your first car that you I had, had a Chevy Cavalier, 1996 Chevy Cavalier. Mine was a Datsun before they changed their name to Nissan. Uh, but I mean, they had changed their name by the time I was driving. It's just it was a super old car. It was a Datsun 200 SX. It talked. That was weird. It was like a 1980 Datsun. Weird. Yeah, you'd open the door, leave the lights, and it goes, lights are on. That's, all, was, that's actually But awesome. then they stopped doing that. Like, a Datsun. No cars talk today. Right. Like, you Does know? your Tesla not talk to you? Oh, no. No. I feel should like it? It, it's a robot car. It should, it should talk. I feel like it should. It drives itself. Man, what a piece of junk. You're Can't right. even talk. <laughs> What's I it know. doing? You What's it just doing? By throw the way, it away. so for reference, it's 108 degrees outside according to the weather app, and my car is 118 degrees. <gasps> I so, can't. So man. it's down 12 degrees from Jack's, from Jack's car. From Jack's car. So it's, I mean, that's helpful in a way. Can I, can I make a confession? Yes. When I moved here, I moved in my Chevy Cavalier. About a year into working at Rooster Teeth, I finally got a new car. Uh, and for about eight months, I had air conditioning and then it broke. Yeah, and up until worse. six months ago, I did not fix it. Actually, it might be not even six months. I haven't had air conditioning for like three years in my car. And I was just how do you get through a Texas summer without Dude, air conditioning? I, I get it though. I, I, I think how. the first car I ever had that had air conditioning, it was that blue truck that's still out in the parking lot. And that was. 2003. So that was the first time I ever had air conditioning car. So I was 29 at that point in time. I yeah. like basically I just have not had air conditioning and I had it for a few months. It was great, but then it broke and it was such an expensive fix that I was just kind of like, eh, I can, I've lived without it before. Mm -hmm. I can live without it again. Yeah, and I don't know. I, I don't know how you survived Texas you, without. Yeah, you're driving home now tonight in this. I mean, no, I have yeah. air conditioning now. I okay. I went and fixed it and it will be a, a staple in my car for moving forward. <laughs> but I don't know. It's just like it didn't bother me. But man, it, it like looking back, it was real stupid. Yeah. Yeah. What was your first car, Bethany? Ooh, it was a Nissan 240SX. It was like a little red oh, convertible. Oh, yeah. The same basic one. Except yeah. I had oh, was the, that what it was? Mine was a convertible. Mine yeah, was, was a red 200SX. Oh, yeah. Mine was a red. It was like convertible black top. It was cool. Sounds cool. I was happy to have it in high school, but it was totaled like four months later or something. I had a gold 1982 Dodge 400 velour bench seats. One of the ones with the nice like faux leather on the top, like nice K car. It we got it. It was a repo. We got it for two hundred and fifty bucks. My two hundred, yeah. And uh, uh, ended up hose. selling it when the blinker went out because it would have just cost blinker. more to fix that. They would have had to remove the steering column oh, or wow. something. And so I, we just sold the car instead of fixing the blinker. Yeah, it would have cost more than at the that car. point. You just have to. Yeah. yeah that's, that's why I sold my Cavalier because getting it up to date for inspection would have been like. Yeah. No. It was. It was like a thousand dollar car. I wasn't yeah. going to spend a thousand to fix it. God. Yeah, I had a two hundred dollar card, sold it for two hundred fifty dollars, like eight years later. I have nice. such good memories of like a Spoiled shitty me. car, though, like having like a boombox because the there was like it was an eight track <laughs> or something, <laughs> right. whatever whatever options were there were not working, and so I just had a boombox sit next to me in the thing and would play it as I was driving over the mountain. Did you so have much clouds fun. in your headliner too? Like it was a faux no, sky. No, I wanted to. Oh. My dad, the the headliner was all was all like sliced up. And so uh, my dad replaced all of it himself, and I begged him to put clouds in so I could call it a convertible, and he wouldn't. He didn't think it was nearly as funny as I did. I think so. It's great. No clouds. Thanks. All my, all my friends that any any of them who were uh, lucky enough to have cars, it was either 
the air conditioning broke or the 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 ceiling started to fall down like that droop of the <laughs> yeah, cloth and started back. to like disconnect and go like so you'd be in your friend's car with, <laughs> with like and I just it was a certain era of cars where that happened like yeah. late seventies early eighties cars which then kids in the early nineties those are the cars that you were end up getting you know or could afford or getting handed down to you, you know, if I'm you were lucky. I'm so grateful I had a shitty car though. I've appreciated every improvement to every car yeah. I've ever had. I think you since. have to start out that way. You, if you don't start off with a shitty car, you're you're gonna destroy your car. Like everyone who's had a shitty car doesn't take care of it well, or like they you learn on a hoopty on something like a, a beater. On a beater, yep. To me though, it's like the worst habit is when people let their car just fill with trash. Oh yeah, just, I'm. Ooh. I've never done that though, even oh, yeah. in like a bad car. So I, I have a thing that I do where I, I floss in the car. I have dental floss in my car. <laughs> you have picks so you do the actual... I have like, I have a little, I have the little picks. But it's while you're uh -huh. driving? But they're like, a, it's like a combination of the two. It's like a, it's like a pick that's got like a that little the, piece yeah, of, yeah. yeah. And you got, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you do that while you're driving? Stoplights and stuff. Which oh. I gotta stop doing because my car is recognizable, so... <laughs> I do have people who pull up <laughs> to me right. every now and then are like, you know, like, I saw your car and hey, what's going on? I'm like, <laughs> but hey, what's up? It's not quite as bad as picking your nose, but I feel like it's pretty okay, close. Okay, so here's a question. What do you do with the pick when you're done? See, that's just it. So I, I you couldn't trash, imagine. You trash, you're a dirty trash person. I couldn't imagine leaving one of those in no, the car. No, you can't. No, because it's like, if I, like, use dental floss <laughs> in my car. So what do you do? And you have little pieces of food. Like, when you're, well, yeah, when you're, picking at, when you're picking out your teeth, what, what? happens to no, the glittering. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Glittering, I'm just kidding. Bernie. I'm Don't mess with Texas. I wanted to see your reaction though to that because littering was when I was a kid was a thing. This is normally when I, like, when I refer to Patrick, back me up or Mike, uh, but they're both not here. Uh, <laughs> littering was a thing, and then they went through this whole campaign in the late seventies, early eighties, when I was just like five years old. They were hardcore. You can't litter, and litter became like it's one of the few social shaming things we have left. It is, it's yeah. like if you hear somebody's litters, you're like. You shouldn't do that. Like even more so than like hearing somebody robbed something or like took money, <laughs> know. you know. know but if you hear somebody littered, you're like, oh. bad. Well, if, like you found money on the street, people go, "Did you keep it?" And you go, "Well, yeah, it was twenty bucks. I just kept it. I know whose it was." Right. Like, oh, you're awful. You should have taken it. Nobody says that. But if like you throw something on the ground, it's bad. Yeah. yeah. So fun fact: if you want to learn a fun fact about me. I was on the Don't Mess with Texas billboard campaign. Really? Nick and Tally, really? were you really? I was on billboards around Texas. It's it, like, as someone who's not from Texas, when I came to Texas and I saw that, I didn't know it was about littering. I yeah. thought it was yeah. just like, oh, we're tough. Don't mess with us. Yeah, so everybody thinks outside of Texas. Yeah, but, <laughs> but it's a litter It's a litter slogan. Yeah, it was really fun. It was like this. In it fact, was like, if your best friend was Texas, would you still litter? So they had to like put trash in my hair. <laughs> really? I think I remember, very glamorous. remember that billboard. It was very glamorous. Get pictures right. of it? <laughs> Somewhere, yeah. But it was shot, you know, in, in Buda, so... Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's really cool. And now I'm here. You get to be on a billboard? Yeah. That's so cool. That'd be the coolest thing when you're a kid, get on a billboard? Yeah, it was, it was cool. Hell yeah. Brittany, didn't, didn't Richard Teeth have a problem with the Don't Mess With Texas? Oh, it's the only video I think we've ever had taken down. This because is like going to bring, this is like a lot of vectors coming in to, to, <laughs> to one story. So the state of Texas, they introduced license plates that ha could have affinity logos on them for, uh, businesses and they started off the first one was with mighty fine. There's a Texas mighty fine license plate In uh -huh. fact, We could probably look up a picture of it And I'm pretty sure that mighty fine is probably the only company that got approved for it Because we immediately jumped on that with oh, how crazy would it be to have a rooster teeth license plate official Texas license plate with rooster teeth on it and we were like chugging along we were we were moving through the process and everything was great and then Right in the middle of that, we got a letter from the state of Texas, different department, that sent us a cease and desist to take down uh, a video we had about getting a license plate at the DMV. And Matt keeps getting all these really offensive license plates, but randomly. Is that he, video down? Oh, yeah. We had to they, yeah, we had to pull it because in because it was a DMV, or we call it DPS in Texas, Department of Public Safety, uh, we put the Don't Mess With Texas logo up on a poster, a fake poster mm -hmm. that we made. And that's a trademark logo, and we couldn't use their trademark logo, Don't Mess With Texas. And so that was, the whole video was about, the whole letter was about that. And we were not going to mess with the state of Texas. There's a lot of people I would fight on a cease right. and desist. The state of Texas, when no. we exist as a company in the state of Texas, we were not about to fight that. I was like, that video's gone. Take it down. So it's one of the only videos we've removed. Yeah, there's the Mighty Fine license plate. Yeah, so right. imagine that, but it's like, 
uh, the rooster teeth on the left side, and then the license plate number, and then at the bottom it said rooster teeth. You, you guys talked about doing that on a podcast, was, I think, because I remember like listening to you guys talk about it in the drunk tanks, and my friend was like, "We're gonna move to Texas and get those cool license plates." Wouldn't that be yeah, cool? I think we announced it. Yeah, because we were like, "We're yeah. we're it's on the way." I think we might have done it at a PAX. I think yeah. that's what it might be because we yeah. the first time I met you was at PAX Boston, right? Yeah, PAX East 2010. Yeah. That was when we introduced Monty for the first time, right? Yeah, he was sitting right next to me. Oh, it was yeah, that's wild, right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. There's, I just saw videos of that from uh, Just Kid putting some of that stuff up. It's uh, it's crazy. And then you did the hot sauce with Jeff, right? Yeah, it was wild. Yeah, that's so crazy. So crazy. So whatever else. Uh, Bethany, how are you holding up with RTX coming? I'm tired a lot. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> um, You know, it's a lot of really long hours, whether it's in the office or at home. I'll get home and like... My boyfriend's been so sweet. He'll like cook dinner and I will barely pick at it. And I'm still just like working. He'll just come check on me and be like, you really need to eat, babe. And I'm like, I know I'll eat another bite since you're standing here watching me. I can't but imagine him cooking. How tall is your boyfriend? He's 6'6". Six, 6'6". Six. Six, six. How tall G- are you, Adam? Giant. I'm 6'3". Okay, because you guys were you're, next. You're oh, so, wait. He's so not 6'3". You are not 6'3". You're 6'3". You, you've got to be taller I'm, I'm really that. imposing because I'm wide. I'm fat. <laughs> the, so, well, because we, we had you guys next to each other at the He's New Year's, way New than New Year's me. party, uh-huh. remember? And I remember just y'all meeting, and I thought you were taller than six three as well. Yeah, he's a big boy. Yeah, he's, you know, he's a he's a big guy. I was imagining him cooking it like a normal size stove, and just <laughs> like if I was working on like a kid's place. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm picturing like yeah. Mr. Incredible, like. <laughs> having a hunch over to so reach everything. He's taking care of you. He knows. He's, yeah, he's just been time. so supportive. You know, like it's hard to explain what we do sometimes. And this is the first RTX because we've been together for almost a year. So he hasn't seen RTX. He hasn't seen me in crazy RTX, like crazier headspace that I've ever been in. Um, but yeah, just like real supportive because, you know, my team's been like killing it and mm-hmm. we're kind of all in it together. Like no one really leaves unless we're all like, are we all going or are we all going to stay till 10 o'clock? And yeah. So we all really like pitch in. You got that countdown timer on your wall. I know it's it's pretty bad. Today's what ten days? To yeah, I, I can tell you it's ten days because I was in your office today and I was looking at. Oh, the that's 10 right. Days. You were in this morning. Yeah. You're never there. You never visit anymore. That's I always you have, have a sign. sign on your office not to says, bother. You. Well, <laughs> there is that kind of bitchy sign on the door. <laughs> the, uh, don't come I, over. I stay out. I don't. Well, it's like, funny because we added people. So we started with one ever. sign that was a little bit nicer. It says something to the effect of, "We're in RTX crunch time. Please don't bother us." But then we had to add one that says, "Even if this has to do with RTX, please." Send us a message first because people were starting to come in saying, oh, well, I have something to talk to you about RTX about. And we're like, but still, you can't just interrupt our day. So. Someone to mention. So one of the meetings we had today, we were talking about uh, security measures. Last year was the first year that we had to have metal detectors. Yeah. And we had to, we put as many metal detectors as we could in on the first day. It wasn't enough. So then we had to go get metal detectors from like everywhere else. Everywhere in else and around town. Yeah. And How pull do you, them is in. There- is there just like a metal detector store? How does that That's work? Well, I from the still airport. don't understand it because we were told that they only had X amount last year. And then that second day, they had to pull overnight from various places around town that have them. I yeah. still don't understand it. You can get them. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, I wouldn't know what kind of company. <laughs> But like a logistics company or an events company that's partnered with the convention center probably has that kind of thing. That's yeah. so weird to think about, though. Like there is. is someone in Austin whose specialty is the organization, logistics and transportation of metal detectors. Our first year at the convention center, you know what the big deal was? Uh, stanchions, which Dude, are the, oh, yeah. I remember. You remember the metal uh, poles? That yeah. you have the uh, ribbons that run well, to like Freeman, guide people. Yeah, I was, and Freeman I was had to pull of, from all over the state of Texas and right. everywhere to get them. I was yep. head of security at that RTX, and I remember the stanchion oh, debacle. Yeah, of yeah. Security yeah. Is cute. I was head of Guardian security, and, and nobody oh. remembers that kind of thing that's happening. But this year, a lot yeah. more metal we, detectors. Yeah, we've put out a couple of emails, so hopefully you've had a chance to look through them. Um, we got a lot of questions last week when we put out that information. Hopefully, we've answered all of the questions. I think we have. Um, but we're going to send that out a couple more times. So make sure that you and your friends read all of the information, go to the correct place. It's, it's really important. Yeah. And we, uh, we mailed badges this year to a lot of people. We mailed badges. So I would estimate about 85% of the folks have already been given their badge, which is great. So registrations line should, registration lines should be down this year. Mm -hmm. Um, the only people that would need to pick up on site are if you're international, Canada is not part of that. Um, Canada, if you had picked up your badge before July 6th, you would have already gotten it. Um, and anyone that purchased after July 6th, whether domestic or international, will have to pick it up. But it's going to be so much easier this year. Just want to be clear because people are traveling here. Yeah. You said picked it up before July 6th. You mean bought it before Sorry, July 6th, Sorry, uh, right? purchased it before July 6th. Okay. So anyone that was Canada or the U.S. that bought a badge before July 6th 
should have had it shipped. If not, you need to reach out to Frontgate as soon as you can. Um, if you purchased a badge after July 6th or live in an international place other than Canada, then you will have to pick it up on site. I'm glad you said that front gate thing because I'm sure there were people listening to this who were like, what? I'm supposed to have my badge right. already? They're probably tweeting me right now. Right, probably. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's a lot of people. So It's a lot. Yeah. It's uh, it's one of those things, man, I there's been such – it's been such an interesting year to watch events. Uh, yeah. You know, watching like, you know, even something – like VidCon, which is well long, it's it was uh, acquired by Viacom. The show was, mm -hmm. I, I think, it was Viacom. I think so. And, you know, this was the first year where it was under that, and there's like a big shift. And then they had that whole Tanacon thing that was going oh, on that, at the same time. Yeah, where that influencer YouTuber she tried to have her own convention with zero experience, no, zero went experience, well. yeah, did, and no time. Sixty to do days, it? sixty like forty five days to plan it. She yeah, did well. Bethany, did you like watch her vlogs or anything about that? Just as an events person. I can imagine how traumatic listening to those vlogs must be for you. Yeah. I, just one point, like a week before, two, a couple of weeks before, didn't she go on a vacation to Hawaii and then get back and be like, no, I'm going to plan You should it. watch the, if the A lot Shane, of other people told her this. A lot of people yeah. told her that. You should watch the I, Shane Dawson documentary on that. It's, oh. it's a three-parter. Yeah, it's, it's I will so say this. Like, I don't ever wish anyone failure ever. No. You know, I, I, ho I wish it would have worked, especially for all of the attendees and the fans in the community that they have. That were disappointed at the end of the day. You know, that's not fun for anyone. And I know and people they sunburnt and heat everything. exhaustion, sunburn. Yeah. I would never wish that on anyone. But there is that level of like when someone just thinks they can pull it off without any experience and without a team and without expertise and well, and yeah, and her too. Hers was coming from a negative place. Like yeah. she, she was, was mad at VidCon. She was mad at VidCon and wanted to fuck them over. Right. And well, yeah. I mean, yeah. We'll essentially, take, take, take their, them. you know, stick it to them. Take their, you know, take some of their ticket sales away or whatever. Right. It's like that was one of so. the things that was said later was, oh, we didn't have enough time to plan this. It's like, well, you chose the you date. You chose it. You wanted to make sure it was on the same weekend as VidCon. That was your choice yeah. to do that. And I think anytime you start from a negative place, boy, if you go back and watch the vlogs where she's mad at VidCon, it is those don't hold up well. They did not age yeah. well at all. And uh, she, yeah, she's mad about like they wouldn't let her in. And it's like they said it was so causing a security issue, and they moved me, and I got really mad at that. And so then I was just standing there, and I went out to the crowd to say hello to everybody. Then there was a mob, and they said you can't do this. And it's like basically the, what it ends up being after you, the end result with TanaCon is this story about this woman who can't learn a lesson. Like she's <laughs> like people, professional people who do this for years are telling you this is a problem. Putting this many people in one place is a problem, and mm -hmm. here we need to work out a solution for this. And sorry you weren't a featured guest, but you can't do this. And then she's like, no, fuck this, I can do it. And then she tries to do it on her right. own. After three attempts with VidCon that all went badly, she then does it on her own, and then it was ten times worse, thousand times worse. Oh, so, so with, 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 no with, fire with, Festival. Yeah, with, well, with Fire, oh. with fire <laughs> Festival, not. like people went to jail for that. Do you think that yeah, there's going to be any repercussions be, for her or the, the Michael guy? I don't know. I haven't heard anything since the whole, like, she hasn't been making videos. I haven't been talking. I heard that she was going to be if if the event itself wouldn't refund she would be personally reaching out so i don't but do you I think, think that's enough though because like if know. you look at the if you watch the documentary you kind of get the 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 impression that there's like you, there's a good case against her for like fraud where where, where she knew the amount of attendees that the capacity that the hotel could it. hold and willingly went ahead and invited like five thousand guests yeah they only hold a thousand yeah uh, and like that's not good mm -hmm. <laughs> also also want to be clear events are hard <laughs> and and we're sitting here talking about this today. There is going to be something, and we don't know course, what it is. There, there will be something. something at RTX next week that happens, and we'll have to adjust to it. Yeah. Ten days. Hopefully Sorry, we need to say next week. It's, <laughs> it's, like, it's next week, I mean, for us, <laughs> yeah. moving in. But I will say, I mean— There's always something. There's always, always something. something, and I think what Rooster Teeth and what— the events team do really well that other conventions don't is we really care and listen to the com community throughout the process. So even sending out our official plan last week, we listen to people and we've made adjustments from that. You know, we don't just wait till people show up mm -hmm. and then are upset. So we're trying. Yeah. I'm excited we, though. RTX is so much fun like every Christmas. year. It's so much fun. Is this your hardest one of all the RTXs? Oh, yeah. This one's, this yeah. This is the one that like, and I know that some people in the company might hate when we say it because, you know, RTX London is also a focus. It's only six weeks later. But for us, we're like, don't talk to us about RTX London. That's a breeze, you know, for, mm -hmm. for what we have to do for Austin. Yeah. I mean, it's always like you get a lot of people in one place. There's always going to be some kind of problems. Always. Um, you, you, and the, the big thing is that it doesn't matter. There's always going to be lines. Mm -hmm. Always. doesn't matter what it is. You get a bunch of people in one place. There's going to be lines like uh, like Hall H for Comic-Con. 
They start right. lining up 48 hours in advance. Which advanced. is insane. I'm it's glad just, we don't do that. Hall each is crazy because isn't that one of the ones they don't clear? Yeah, you can just sit there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. The, the whole time. <laughs> Unless you're Star Wars. You hear you're, you're what they did? Oh, that was brutal. They had the stormtroopers come in. They marched everybody out to a special uh, John Williams orchestral performance of the Star Wars uh, soundtrack. And uh, then Kevin Smith came in after them and was like, the entire hall had cleared out. And I think he started off his hour with... 10% of Hall H filled and to his credit over the course of his speech people find out you could get into Hall H and hear Kevin Smith talking uh, And uh, he filled it back up, you know, he filled it back up like 30 50% So that's, oh no. that's a big hall too. That's 7,000 people. Is that right? 7,000? Yeah, wow. yeah, it's one of the biggest ones there is but yeah, but there's, there's gonna be lines, you know, when you go to a stadium, mm -hmm. there's lines. It's like the people show up every single week. They know how many people come to these stadiums. Yeah. Yet there's still lines. People make lines. And it's one yeah. of those things we, we work constantly trying to figure out how to make the lines better. But it is definitely part of it any is. kind of mass population event. Yeah. For sure. So, so there'll be something. I don't know what it is. So knock on wood, nothing serious. <laughs> Everybody's fine. A lot of people in one place. We'll see what happens. We also have our amazing guardian. So. They make everything better. They can, do. Can you say how many guardians we have this year? We have about six hundred. It's a lot. Six what color shirts will, will they be wearing? They will be this wearing year? bright red. Bright red. So oh, that's like back them. to uh, twenty ten or twenty eleven. That was before life had meaning. Yeah. How many years were you a guardian before you joined the staff? Two. It was like the first year was like one of the the lead security guardians, and then after that, I had the same thing with a, a friend, and then after that, like a month after that, I, I got hired August fifth. So five years ago. Mm -hmm. Oh my so. gosh, you're only, yeah, at RTX will be your fifth mm -hmm. anniversary. Yep. That's cool. It's exciting. So, but we we still work work hard, you know, trying to make it work every year, try to find new things to do. Yeah. Always try to find ways to make it better. <laughs> this is a good segue to this. No, it doesn't do that. Excuse me, I'm reading an ad. I'm not. Uh, Amazon, <laughs> they've gotten so lazy. I read a story oh. about a guy who, who they put an Amazon package on his roof. And I right after I read that story, Ash and I left to go somewhere. Amazon had showed up. They literally put our package at the curb. Like it was just sitting on the curb at the street like of not, our house. Not at the mailbox. I think I took a just what was just the, propped what up. What were you starting it with? What do you mean the roof? I didn't hear that. Oh, some guy online was talking about a story about like they threw his Amazon package on the roof. Oh my gosh. And that's it was it, just on, it was up there. Is, it, is, it, is Amazon using their own like they're using their own carrier now? It was they a Twitter. use a mix. I read that. So they like I think they like we get so I, we've in the past got some things via like other carriers, but um, at least here in Austin They do have their own Amazon fulfillment. They go around they're in Amazon trucks and they're doing uh, de deliveries and the fulfillments mm -hmm. and Sometimes they're okay, but I've had some I've had terrible experiences trying to do same day or next day shipping because it means that I think I think Typically means that it's coming from an Austin warehouse and they're using the local company, whatever. But I've had same day deliveries take like a week to get to me. That's been happening to me too. I'm still waiting on a pair of shoes that I bought before my birthday, which is July 1st. Still. How? I don't know. Like if it's if it's being... I honestly forgot about it. If they're the ones fulfilling it and it's in their warehouse with their drivers, how does it take a week to get to the same day address? I don't know. Don't don't mark. Don't tell me that you can deliver it same day if you fucking can't. Oh wow! Look at Agreed. you. You upset? I'm mad about it. They delayed some chainmail supplies. I desperately needed. Hmm. How's your chainmail going? Slow. You see, it's so slow process. It is so slow. I will go through seasons of TV shows to keep me company while I make a tiny patch. There was a great Reddit thread today that I read, which was going back in time. Like everyone thinks they go back in time and they would be a genius because they'd know so much. Whereas in reality, it's like they would just think you're an idiot because you don't know how to farm and you don't <laughs> speak Latin. <laughs> so you, you would never be able to like to convey any of your information to anybody. Also, you'd probably get burned pretty quick. Yeah, well, there was a whole uh, historian guy in the uh, comments who like debunked that. It's like that people that was in the 1100s, you know, AD, the Middle Ages. It was later uh, when we, they moved away from the church, when they, you know, started believing in things that were unnatural. You know, and started burning people and things like that. So, but everybody thinks of that as being the Middle Ages, but the Middle Ages were, I guess, actually pretty routinized and structured. Uh, and there was, you know, there was there was a system for crimes and things like that. It wasn't just like people getting their heads chopped off and burned at the stake and things like that for being accused of being dunked in the lake or something like that. 
Okay, all right. Well, Bethany, very good luck uh, producing RTX Austin <laughs> for the next week of your life. I just and like it. Very good luck. This wonderful weekend. So Thank break a leg. Learned. What's wish, the appropriate thing to say for a major be? event? I don't know. Good luck, survive. All right. And uh, yeah. everyone, have a very good RTX. Hope to see you yeah. guys in Austin for RTX. See you soon. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.